First question, first issue is how to see. How do we see with a wide lens? And the answer is, if you succeeded, but your partners failed to change, you did not succeed. What does this mean? So let me tell you a story about tires. Michelin's been in the tire business for over a century. They're the biggest, best tire company in the world. And the reason they're so big and so wonderful is because they have driven innovation in this industry for well over a century. Innovation in tires for a century had been about <coughs> extending the life of a tire. So that a tire that you bought in 1910 would last for 500 miles. And the real winner was someone who'd give you a tire that you wouldn't need to change except for every 750 miles. This was the cycle. And the reason Michelin is Michelin is because they're the ones who pioneered the radial tires. Completely different way of constructing the tire that allows us to have tires that last not thousands, but tens of thousands of miles. And so Michelin had a breakthrough insight in the early 90s. And they looked at this tire and they said, you know what, there's one thing left that doesn't quite work for the customer. And it is what happens to this tire when you drive over a nail. So Michelin had an idea. And they said, you know what, we're going to give you a tire. You get a flat tire, a little light goes off on your dashboard and says, hey, you probably didn't notice, but you had a flat tire. Maybe you want to swing by the garage sometime next week, but for now, just keep going. A run flat tire. It's brilliant. They set out to do this, and they did it. This is a great innovation. And if you listen to Michelin, they say it's the greatest innovation. Michelin's CFO, what does he say about this tire? In 1999, he says in 10 years, there won't be any other kind of tire except the PAX system. And this isn't just company groupthink. 2005, J.D. Powers talking about what customers want. By 2010, over 80% of cars will be fitted with run flats. Because they've been delivered, we can make them. People love them. This is a great innovation. But it failed. Why? Well, because a great innovation is not enough. In order to deliver this, Michelin needed to innovate, not just itself, but also with partners. They had to manage what I call co-innovation risk. They needed their partners to develop this polyurethane membrane. They needed partners to develop new architectures for, these, for the rims that'll clamp and unclamp. They needed partners to develop the pressure monitoring system that'll let that little light on your dashboard know that you have a flat. That took seven years. But they did it, and they succeeded. And that's why the conservative CFO only in 1999, when we were ready to go, was willing to say, this is a win. But it's not. Because the question is, what else do you need in order to win? Who else needs to participate to make this value proposition fly? And there are two critical parties. The first is, well, who is it that puts the light in the dashboard in the first place? That's the car maker. And the other is, well, who's going to fix it after it goes flat? And that's the garage. Those are the pieces. But it's not enough to understand the pieces. You need to understand how they're going to come together. And where Michelin focused all their effort, because that is how they focused to make wins like the radio come together before. That's what Goodyear focused on when they made their blockbuster success of the AquaTread tire, is they focused on making sure customers wanted this thing, and they focused on the car manufacturers, because they were the ones who charge of putting the tire this is not a chicken and egg problem. Right? The chicken and egg problem basically says you can't move forward unless the other person moves forward. Michelin would be in a great place if that were true. Here, they can manufacture as many of these run flat tires as they want without the garages moving forward. But if the garages don't move forward, what happens is the value proposition changes. Now, it's no longer you get a flat tire and you come and you get it repaired for 80 bucks. Now, you get a flat tire, and I can't fix it. So you know what that means? i got to give you a new run flat tire for 300 bucks. Now, this is still a value proposition. You could drive for 100 miles at 50 miles an hour, but the proposition just changed from, and you can have it repaired for $80, or you can change your two tires for 600 That's a very, very different proposition. 
And this is what re the reality that Michelin ran into. They had a great innovation. By every traditional measure, customers wanted it, they could deliver it, and they could exclude competitors. What they missed was their ecosystem. They understood the pieces, they didn't understand how they come together. So that's the first message. When we look at innovations, we can't just look at execution risk. Am I going to give the customer what they want? We have to expand our lens to ask two questions. First, who else needs to innovate? And two, after the system is ready, who else needs to buy in before it can deliver the promised value to the end customer? That's why if you succeeded but your partners haven't changed, you did not succeed.